Which brings me to this New South Wales parliamentary inquiry into the appointment of former Deputy Premier John Barillaro to a flash new job in New York as New South Wales Trade Commissioner. Today, a bombshell to beat all bombshells, with Barillaro's former Chief of Stark, Staff, Mark Connell, making a damning claim in a confidential letter to Parliament's Public Accountability Committee. Connell wrote that before the position of New York Trade Commissioner was created, Barillaro told him the trade postings were an opportunity for him to get the F out of this place, saying he would force the New South Wales government to move the headquarters from California to New York. He claimed Barillaro said, I don't want to go to London. F that, I'm going to New York. Now, even more crucially... Connell alleged the conversation arose directly after a meeting between Barillaro, then Treasurer Dominic Perrottet and then Investment Minister Stuart Ayres in April 2019. Now, the opposition seized upon the evidence this morning as damning of the Premier and damning of his government. It flies in the face of every assurance that we've been given from every level of the Liberal National Government in New South Wales for the last month. We were assured this was independent, it was arm's length from government, it was an honest process, that the selection process was fair and not provided or had any interference from the New South Wales Government. These revelations, which have only just come out in the last few minutes, are completely damning of all of those assurances. And you have to ask, Laura, why didn't anyone bother asking John Barillaro's Chief of Staff what his view was about this New York position. I think the reason he wasn't asked about this latest revelation is because the government didn't want to know the answer. And if Mr Perrottet was fair dinkum about this inquiry and spending a taxpayer money and creating a job for one of his mates, he would have been honest and asked Mr Connell, John Barillaro's senior advisor, everything he knew a month ago. Instead, we've just been met with stonewalling from the New South Wales Premier. I mean, he's really got to front up today and explain what is going on here because all the assurances that he gave to the media, to me, to the people of New South Wales and to the Parliament have fallen over this morning. Now, before you think it's a lay-down misere, it's all clean-cut, pretty simple, hold on. John Barillaro was quick to, to deny the allegations today, demanding to be immediately called to give his own evidence. He stated, I completely refute the statement by Mr Connell. The conversation he has recalled is fictitious, false and only serves as a reminder as to why we had to part ways. Now, this appointment has had a stench about it from the get-go, though, if not only for the obvious appearance of a conflict of interest. You can't have the creator of a new international job become the first appointed person for that job. Not to mention the fact that someone else, eminently qualified, had already been told she had the job. No matter which way this goes from here, no matter how many ministerial staff or ministers come forward to refute today's bombshell evidence, the damage has been done. With just eight months to go before a New South Wales poll, this may be the death knell for the Coalition Government's 12-year reign. The public now cannot buy for a second the Premier's argument that this has been a transparent process. And to add to the stench, Mark Connell's letter has now been handed to investigators from the Independent Commission Against Corruption. It's a farce, it stinks, and the government will certainly pay a high price.